T-Quilts and I'm here with another Sasha Cole video. On a previous video I showed you where I had done a Sasha Cole haul where I had purchased some pre-printed kits from Amazon and I wanted to come back because there is another company called Olympus and this company is different packaging from the other packaging so I wanted to get one of these and I think the other package is Yokoto if I'm not mistaken, I'll put the word on the screen for you just in case I'm pronouncing it wrong. And then this company is Olympus, so I ordered one more. And this was $9 and some change. I'll put a link for it down in the description box. And then while I was there, this same company produces variegated sashiko threads. So I thought that maybe I would also try one of these with or try this on one of the blocks but I'm not going to be working with this uh, right now but I want to talk about the fact that I have stored all of my pieces into a container so whenever I want to do some sashiko I know exactly where it is and then inside of this container I have made myself a package of the products that I will need and I am actually going to come back to this because we want to compare but I'm going to go ahead and put this thread up so in this bag I have everything that I would need for Sashiko and the reason why I I'm doing these products or the reason why I decided to start this project is because I'm going to be doing some traveling and this is great for downtime. Now I'm not a hand quilter but I find that I am actually liking this. I have completed two blocks and I will show you those at the end of the video but I thought that I would share with you what I have been using. So in the haul video I talked about where I bought this thimble kit and so I took this thimble out so you'll need a thimble these are the needles that came in the kit so you're going to need some needles of course you're going to need a pre-printed panel or if you're not lazy like me and you want to mark your own you can buy templates or you can use any existing templates or rulers to mark your own patterns you do not have to buy it pre-printed you can make your own designs I'm lazy so I like the pre-printed kits and then in my kits I also have some instructions and I have those but I have not really been using them I had already uh, done a couple so let me come back to that and you're also going to need some sashiko thread for this I'm going to be using the white and then I'm also using a binder clip sometimes when you think that you finished a design you may find that you have a line or two that you didn't stitch so what I do is I just clip a binder clip to it so I know I need to go stitch that section so I'm just going to put all of our supplies back for right now and I'm going to go ahead and take out just one Spool of thread here, one skein of thread, and then I can store the rest of this in my container. Just like to keep everything organized so I know exactly where it is. Okay, so let's just start with the thread. When you're dealing with the thread, Sashiko thread is not like your DMC floss. It is a one strand, but that strand is twisted, has about five or six different strands that are incorporated. And Sashiko thread is made for strength and when it's wet and when it starts to bloom, it actually gets stronger and it gets fluffier inside of your stitch piece. So 
if you're wanting to use pearl cotton or DMC floss, you can do that, but it's not the same if you're trying to do it for durability, which is how Sashiko really came about is the commoners were using it for mending. So when you take this out of this sleeve, you will have a part that is tied together. See if I can find where it's tied together here. So you'll have something like this. And what I do is this is just loosely tied onto the skein. So what I do is I'm just going to keep this and just cut off of one end. So if I got my measurements here, I'm just going to go into the center and cut. And I tend to leave where it's connected with the with a knot together so that it holds my thread and then let me measure and see how long this thread is once it's cut it's actually 51 inches long on this particular skein and it has about 20 pieces of yarn so this one has i'd say about 25 pieces and i'm going to assume that different Thread skeins may have different amounts, and it might be a different length as well. So I'll check that, and if it is, I will let you know on the screen for another brand that I also have. So you can see here where I've got this one skein, one thread, and what I do is I just try to pull it out, and this one might be tied to the knot. So let me try and see if I can get a different one out. And then I just pull this out and I leave the rest of it together. And then when I store it into the bag, let me zoom you out. And when I store it in the bag, I just take it and wrap it around itself. And I can't do a great job of it right now because I'm in front of the camera. But I just wrap it around itself a few times like that. And then I just store it back into the bag. Okay, so now that I've got the thread cut, I don't need my scissors unless I need to stop and cut as I'm stitching. So, if you can stitch, the whole point of Sashiko is to stitch in one continuous motion until you can't stitch anymore. I don't like to jump more than one inch if I'm going to do it as well, so I'm okay with that. As long as it's less than an inch then or inch or less, then I will go ahead and skip. So now let's go ahead and open up our packages. So right here on the Yokoto patterns, you can see where it is different from the Olympus patterns. And I don't know who came out with these first, if it makes a difference. I'm going to assume that they're both made in Japan because the packaging says that they're both made in Japan. But there is a noticeable difference and I'm hoping that you can see it right off the bat. You've got different packaging you also got where these stitch lines are darker than on the Olympus. So the Yokoto is darker than the Olympus. Also on the Olympus, they kind of give you a grid about the direction that you should sew or a recommended grid pattern. Whereas on this one, they do not. And I'm hoping you can see that it's just a pattern. And I pulled out the paper when I first got them to make sure that there was nothing on the back. So the instructions for this did come with this in the package where I got three of these, five skeins of thread, and I've got the instructions. So it did come with English instructions, which the Olympus does not. So let me get that out. Ok, 
Okay, so it's in another bag. <laughs> So when you actually open up the Olympus, these are your instructions. So all written in Japanese. Okay. So let me take them out of the packaging just so you can see the difference in the line drawings as well. Now, since I have done some practice, I do know that as you are working on these projects that these lines will disappear. Because remember with Sashiko, when it's pre-printed, the lines will wash out. And that means that your sweat, your body moisturizers, lotions, th anything of that type will cause these lines to disappear. So I noticed that Sometimes I would have a line and then as I was stitching, I might have seen where some of the line was disappearing just from normal hand sweat and it was not like extremely hot. So you do need to be careful with that. You do not want to press these with an iron because pressing with an iron could also cause your seams to come up. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one up because we are not going to work on this one. I'm actually going to do this one for the camera purposes and these kits are being sold as samplers and so what you normally have is there are 12 inch squares normally and then you have two pieces of fabric that are put together with the fold well they're not really two pieces of fabric it's actually one piece of fabric and half of it is printed with your design. And what most people were doing with these was that they were making pillows for them. And that's what they're called. And they also have the word sampler included, which some people are putting them together as quilts. Now, one of the things that you have to decide is if you want to make your piece with two layers of fabric or do you want to make it with one layer of fabric. I opted to make with two layers of fabric and I just want to show you on the back here where they have sample instructions here that are also written in Japanese and this will wash out as well when you wash the quilt top. So they even tell you on the instructions that you don't want to use an iron. Now you could just use one layer if you want to make a pillow with this or you want to have this fabric go behind it when you're done you could just stitch with one layer. Although this is 100% cotton this fabric is a little thinner. It's a looser weave because of this technique and they recommend that you use two layers so I've just been using two layers. So that's what I've been doing. So the next thing we need to do is get a needle. Now I don't know anything about these needles other than I'm just using a needle. I don't know what the experts opinions are on if you should have a longer needle versus a shorter needle or when you should switch. So I'm just going to pick the longest needle and I also have my thimble the thimble is a pusher thimble so when you put it on you actually want it to go on your hand like so and basically you're just using it to push because all we're actually doing here is running stitches and on most instructions they will tell you to stitch around on the dotted line first and I don't I just start stitching I, I just make it <laughs> I do the stitching last because I figure if anything's going to shift and move I rather it do it as I'm stitching out instead of stitching the outside first so I'm gonna go ahead and thread this needle if you're having difficulties threading your needles you could use uh, you could get a needle threader. Okay. So you do have a long piece of thread that you're working with when you're doing Sashiko. And I like to start 
where I have my fold where I'm going to be stitching my fold like going out but since I've got this particular type of design I know I can't jump from here to there so I'm going to go from here start on the center work my way down and go up and then grid until I stop so that's going to be my first set of stitching one of the things you do you have are choices on how you want to do your beginning and finishing you could start at the end here let me show you so I'm just gonna pull this through and I'm gonna leave a tail about two inches long or so maybe two and a half inches because remember you've got to come back and thread those ends in like you would if you were cross stitching and then with the stitching you're basically pushing fabric onto the needle so the white lines you want to make sure you're going over it with your thread and then I go underneath on the other lines and you can do as many stitches as you can get on your needle at one time the experts they actually have up to 30 35 stitches and then you actually use your thimble to push whoops wasn't paying attention there got underneath but you want to use your pusher to push through and then what you do is you hold your needle and back the fabric off the needle so you can see where the needle is now almost out and then you pull through and that helps to keep it flat you do not want to use a hoop for this so when I pull that flat I've now got this area with stitches so I just did five stitches I find that I can do like five to seven stitches on a straight line and then when it goes into curves or depending on if I need to turn an area like when I get to here and I need to turn I may just do one or two stitches just to do the turn okay and let me show you the back of this so if I was doing this technique I would have these thread tails hanging and then at the end which you can barely see with all the stitching on here but I've here are my stitch lines here you would take this and weave under two or three stitches so that you can weave this end in now I found a different way of doing it so I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this out and you can already see where the lines here are not as crisp and they are starting to disappear let me zoom you in so you can see that see they're not quite as sharp as over here just from me handling that but what I want to do is I want to start either two or three stitches away from where I'm gonna start down two or three inches from where I really would start so I'm gonna go here come in like at my third stitch away again I'm gonna go and pull my tail in and this time I can make my tail a little bit shorter like say an inch and then I'm going to stitch backwards and then I'm just going to pull that through And I'm just turning it to the back side so you can see I didn't have to turn it but I want to make sure I don't get this tail any smaller than an inch I can trim it later if it's too big I want to go back to the front make sure everything is nice and flat and now what I'm actually going to do is come up right here so my tail my needle is under here underneath at this stitch I'm going to skip that stitch and come back up at this stitch And what that does is I'm stitching on itself and so now it actually locks that thread in and that thread will not move so here I am pulling this thread and it will not move it's actually locked in place by me doing that back stitching now you can over stitch just one sometimes I like to just go ahead and over stitch on two so if you don't one of those people that like to over stitch on just one then you do just one 
so then I just go back and continue stitching like I did before and again I get it on there I use my thimble as my pusher I pull my fabric off the needle as far as I can and then I just hold it and pull through and those are my first few stitches remember you don't have to be perfect with this because these lines will disappear but I try to use the lines as much as I can So I'm not really moving the needle, I'm actually moving the fabric onto the needle. So now I'm down here, I'm on the last stitch before I turn. And this is where sometimes I will just do one stitch. I will just do this one stitch and come right back up and not try to do a whole lot of stitching here. When I get on the back side of the piece, I want to make sure that I'm loose here. Sometimes you even might just want to pull it out and leave a little loop. So if it ever gets tight, then you've got something that that's a loop here so that you can see it won't pull tight. So I'll just leave that little. And remember, we got a loop on the underside that we don't want to take away. So then when I flip over, you can see that my loop is still there. And so then I would keep continuously doing this until I have to stop. Now when I get here, since this is my first time hitting the circle, I could just go ahead and continue around and go ahead and stitch my inner circle as well. So I will continue stitching on this and I will show you some of the other blocks that I've done. So I'm back and I have my first block here and I will put the name of the block on the screen, the English interpretation of the block. And if I have the Japanese name, I will also put that on the block as well. And I don't see it on the packaging, but yeah, I finished this one first and this was one of those that was kind of tricky. And you had to, I'm left-handed, so I started on my left side. If you're right-handed, you will start on this side. So let me show you how I stitched this left-handed. The first instructions will always tell you to stitch your outside border, which I always do last. I don't know why, it's just something that I do. And then it told, I then went and stitched up. So from this corner up, I went under and came back. And then I went around. So therefore, I didn't have to do any back jumping. I could do a whole entire row. And it took like one string of yarn to do the one row. But I did use a different brand of sashiko thread. So you go over, up, back, and over all the way. You go over, up, back, over all the way. Over, up, back over all the way and I did that for the entire row and then you've got where your rows are offset like clamshells so you have like a half of a clamshell here so I started here came down then I went up I went over up back 
over all the way and then you continue that all the way to the end and then at the end you have your three pieces where you go over up back over to the end so that's kind of how that worked it was 10 rows of this so it went pretty fast i did like a row in each setting which was also a, a full string of yarn i have not rinsed these out yet so i'll do a separate video where I'll have these in stages of the rinse out. So that's why I don't have that yet to show. And I'll put the name of number 210 on the screen as well. So again, it tells you to go around the outside edge first. I did not do that. And then for number two, it told you to go ahead and just stitch these straight lines here. So just straight lines all the way through. And that helps to stabilize the fabric as you're doing that as well. And then my number threes were all the diagonal lines. So I did all of the diagonal lines here. And I also went back and did the diagonal lines the opposite way as well. And then I started doing all of the zigzag lines. So you're not really going to see your picture until you're done with this. Turned around, came back. And I'd say I use like a thread and a half for each one of these right here for these three lines completely. And then you also have some zigzag lines up in this area right here. So I did those as well as I was stitching. And then the last part was you were doing the horizontal lines. You were doing the vertical lines. I'm sorry. So you were doing the vertical lines and so then you would come down here and then you would go underneath and come out here so you can go down. Then come back over here and stitch down and then down and that's kind of how you stitch until you until I snuck back over here down snuck back and then down. So it was kind of like a zigzag stitching to do that. And then there were times, that's when I actually put my clip into place where I missed a line that I should have zigzagged to. And so I just put the clip on it and it held it. And then at the end, I just went back and finished off any lines that I had missed. So that's it for this video portion. I will come back with another video showing you how I rinsed these out. And I wanted to wait until I had like three or four of them rinse at the uh so i have different steps that i can show you as i'm working on that process again once i pick my needle i just keep my needle i stick it into the fabric i don't need the pack of needles anymore i just fold this up i put everything that i'm using in a bag it's easy to travel with i even would put the instructions if i want i don't need those so i'm going to get rid of those and also my thimble so i have just my thread thimble scissors my needle is in the fabric my fabric piece and this is all that i have to travel with and i think the reason why i'm doing this is because it would be great for the airport you can take scissors that are up to four inches in length so that's what i am going to be taking with me and I thought well let me test and make sure I really like it before I take this with me on my vacation so that is it for this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're interested in any of these products I will make sure that I leave a link down below in the description box and I'll see you all next time bye bye everybody